Today in my presentation, we are going to talk about a lot of different things. But we're not going to talk about the external things. You know, what kind of shoes are you wearing? Are they Nikes or are they Reeboks? Are they old school or are they this new modern thing? We're going to talk today about the internal stuff. Maybe what you think about when you're alone at home. We're going to talk about how it feels when you go through real sadness, maybe loss, divorce, and other really hard things. And we're going to talk about these things, and I'm not here to scare you. I'm also not here to tell you what to do. I'm here because I'm going to use my story, my experiences with sexual abuse, depression, suicide attempt, to hopefully to get you to think about what you're going through. Let me tell you what depression isn't first. Depression isn't just feeling a little gloomy. It isn't just being a little sad. It isn't being bummed because you didn't do as well as you'd like to on your test. Depression is prolonged, inexplicable sadness that lasts for days, weeks, months, and even longer. I know I'm talking to you very serious today about very serious issues, but one thing about me is I love to laugh. I was that kid growing up who would laugh at any joke all the time. When I was going through depression, I didn't laugh. Sometimes it felt like it hurt to smile. And I remember when I first stopped smiling a bit. When I was eight years old, I was sexually abused. Sexual abuse is never your fault. I decided one day to gather up all the courage I had, and I decided what they tell every child to do and tell an adult. So one day on my way home, I told my babysitter what her son had been doing. I told her about the inappropriate talking, about the sexual abuse, about the advances. And she told me it was my fault. That's when I began to enter this fog of depression. I became a facade, a shell, to entertain people, to be what I thought they wanted. My friends were in gangs. They were drinking, doing drugs. And to top it all off, they were violent. This and how many of you out there just know that you may do something and somehow, someway, your parents just know exactly what you're doing? Mm -hmm. Like a parent radar thing. Well, their radar had been turned on and they saw the kind of people I was hanging out with and they were scared for me. So they picked up the whole family and moved it across country again to North Carolina. In North Carolina, I was the new kid again and I was having an even harder time making friends. I don't know, the white kids didn't like me because I was black and the white black kids didn't like me because I acted too white. I knew what I was doing was wrong. I felt it inside of me, but I just wanted to numb out, so I started using drugs. And I started using prescription drugs. My friend had an old prescription and so I just took some of those. I thought, hey, this isn't illegal and this helps take the edge off. This makes me feel numb to what I'm doing. I was playing doctor with my own body. I didn't care. And I found out later it is illegal to take prescription drugs that are not, in fact, prescribed to you. I got pregnant and I didn't know who the father was. And that's when I made a plan. I made a plan to take my life. My little brother found me crumpled up at the bottom of the stairs. My father picked me up, put me in the car, and drove me to the emergency room the whole time screaming, why did you do this? Don't you know we love you? And the truth is, I didn't know that the depression and the abuse, all these things I had been keeping inside, I was so focused on this and I had let it grab such a hold of who I was. 
I wasn't able to see the people around me, the things around me that I cared about started to really care about my friends and family. I stopped letting this thing inside take me away from them. And I began to laugh and I began to smile again, be that goopy little kid who likes falling and fart jokes. So I had to work really hard once I got out of the mental institution to show my parents that I had learned healthier coping mechanisms than having sex with strange men, abusing drugs, and cutting myself. I am here because we need to talk about these things. We need to raise up all of our voices collectively to remove the stigma so that one day we can all be heard. My name is Keisha Zoller from The Herd. Thank you for hearing me.